In this quick tip video, we're gonna take a look at the ripple edit tool, and this is gonna help us save time when we are performing edits or cuts or trying to move our audio events or MIDI parts around or take specific portions of the events or parts out. And we'd like for the surrounding or the parts that are after it to follow along with these cuts and changes. And this will all make sense in just a moment. So if we take a look at the audio track here, we have three different events grouped here. And if I go ahead and select the center one and delete that out, we can see that the events on either side remain in their original position. Now, if I control Z to bring that back and then turn the ripple edit on, which we can uh, activate by clicking on this button here or by pressing control, alt and R. Now that that's activated and I delete this center audio event out, we can see that the other events that were out to the right are then moved forward. And this is gonna to apply to our MIDI parts as well. So if I select this center MIDI part and delete that out, then we can see that the other parts out to the right are then pulled forward. I'll control Z to bring those back. Now this is also going to work for a specific range that we'd like to remove. So say we'd like to remove this uh, audio out here. If I move above the center line here, we have the range tool. And actually, let me deactivate the ripple edit first. And then if I select that range in this original editing behavior, it's gonna delete that out and we have an empty space there. If I control Z to bring that back out or to bring it back in and then activate the ripple edit. And then once I delete this, we can see that that space is filled in for us. Now this is going to work for our MIDI as well. So say we want to remove these two MIDI notes here. I'll go ahead and select that range. And notice my snap to grid is turned off. If we have that turned on, when we select a range, you can see it's going to snap to whatever our quantized value is set to. But I just want to have more precise control for this example. We want to remove these two out. Let me come back a little bit further we'll select that and then press delete and then we can see the other parts move forward now this is going to work if we are trimming the end of an audio part or event as well so say we'd like to trim this space here where we have no audio i can come to the edge and click hold and pull that in and then we can see these are then pulled forward now, the final way that this is going to work is if I deactivate the ripple edit and take this MIDI part here and say I place it on that, this part in the front, it's going to sit on top of there. And if I move this left or right, we can see our MIDI data is still below there. But if I bring that back out and then turn our ripple edit on, then let's pull this forward place it there and then we can see the other MIDI parts are pushed back and cuts are actually made into that original MIDI part and um, the one that we dragged in is placed in between the two. So the ripple edit is just going to save you some time when you're doing this editing and keep you from having to activate the, the splice tool or the cut tool and then just cutting items, deleting that out, well, ripple edit is on, but if I come back to the sp split tool again, let's cut that, take that out, pull this forward, this forward. So I think you get the idea here. And that is the ripple edit feature.